Hello, my name is Michalina Kotwica and today I want to talk about low-level optimization of algebraic in similar structures, uh, which is actually uh, the reason for, for me to present that is basically that uh, that was my uh, research topic for my master thesis, uh, as you could have seen in the description of this speech. Uh, I'm not a professional Rust programmer. I used to code in Rust during my uh, my time at Intel Poland, but uh, I, I use Rust pr um, as a hobby and for side projects for a few years now. So I, I hope that you will find my presentation interesting enough. So uh, first, I want to uh, to tell you what what is the the plan for the presentation because I hate presentations without a decent plan. So uh, first, I want to show you some math theory that I will use during the other points uh, of the presentation. Then I will present you what is the unit time and uh, type and never type so uh, very special types that are more or less unique to rust and uh, then some optimizations of structures then some optimizations of enums then some code statistics that uh, that i made uh, that i gathered from uh, open source repositories for uh, you know, checking some popular opinions about uh, the stuff I'd be talking about. And then something that is uh, that I consider quite trendy nowadays in REST community, uh, futures or asynchronous execution, if you prefer to put it that way. Uh, so uh, first, um, the, the topic of the talk is algebraic structures, but uh, if you uh, search for that phrase in the book, then you will not find such a thing. Uh, what you will find is uh, chapters number five and six. Uh, number five is for structures and number six is for enums. Uh, so uh, the, the problem here or the, the gotcha here is that uh, the way it's named is uh, comes from the C family, while uh, while the algebraic structures is more of functional programming way to put it. So uh, that's one of the differences and one of the reasons why it's not uh, it's not that obvious what uh, what's the meaning of the things I will be talking about. So uh, first, I want to uh, show you the some maps of type theory uh, so algebraic structures have uh, basically two uh, key operators one is multiplication and one is addition so first if you have a point from the previous slide defined by x y and color then it's multiplication because uh, if you take um, the number of values of that x field can take and y can take and color field can take then if you multiply them you get the total number of values that point can take and for event from the previous slide that takes one of three types of event it's uh, it's uh, su summation because uh, the quit variant the key press variant and click variant are uh, separate so um, it's not like for each variant of quit you have one variant of key press like in the point uh, but uh, uh, what is uh, important here and that's why the the lower uh, part of uh, of this slide is slightly uh, bigger than the upper one is that uh, while uh, for multiplication the set theory and type theory and and how it's coded in rust is basically all the same and for events it's a little bit different 
because for sets it's not just uh, summation it's uh, it's a, a special type addition uh, that uh, preserves the source of uh, of the value so if you have two variants that have no value then they are differentiable uh, that takes single value or for example if you have two variants that each have an integer so uh, these are the basics uh, and uh, the reason uh, why i'm showing you this is that if you have multiplication then you must have a, a, a single unit so it's the analog of number one while in addition you must have the analog of number zero so neutral elements of this operation you might say so for uh, for multiplication it's obviously one because everything multiplied by one is the same number and uh, it's pretty much the same in rust uh, so you can have a structure with which has only uh, which has zero fields so it only has one value is the value and uh, and the most uh, popular way of expressing that is an empty tuple because there is only one empty tuple you cannot parameterize it by anything and the most used uh, uh, and the empty tuple is the most used as the return type of the main method uh, however it's also uh, pretty useful for generics because uh, you can parameterize uh, generics using empty tuple to show that there, the information of some variant of an enum is important but it uh, carries no additional information and one of the examples is result uh, with uh, with zero uh, empty tuple as the error type as you can see here uh, the reason why I'm showing you what it translates to if monomorphized, so if getting rid of the generic arguments, is because uh, for the empty tuple it's mostly obvious. It's not so much when we get to the analog of zero. But what uh, what is important here is that uh, Rust has uh, has the way of dealing with empty tuple quite um, quite different from other languages from the C family because the, uh, the size of the empty tuple is actually zero. So be aware that if uh, you create a generic type which doesn't handle well types that carry zero bytes of information, you might get into trouble. So remember that you actually can create a vector of empty tuples so a hundred of empty tuples is still the same size as empty tuple, where, which is quite useful often. But I, what I found even more useful is the analog of zero, which is never type or exclamation mark if, if you want to be graphic or infallible type if you want to stay on stable rest. Uh, it's I think most known for uh, results which uh, which do not carry any error variant, but it's also uh, used for expressing that the function never returns since the name. Uh, for results, it's uh, actually a little bit tricky because it actually deletes the the whole variant that uh, it occupies so the result that has never as its error type actually never errors so you do not even have the error variant so the whole enum is just a single value and, and it only has a single variant so you can even pattern match it to the okay variant as you can see below for uh, for uh, from str trait uh what is quite interesting here is that the never type uh, that uh, is lacking in language in other languages like c plus or java makes it possible to compose uh, not only compose the algebraic data structures 
but also discard parts of them without suffering runtime costs. Because as you can see here, we do have uh, the our result of computation packed in the results structure, and still it only occupy, occupies the bytes needed to actually store the T type without sacrificing any performance or memory for the error variant because it's never there. Uh, for the uh, for the multiplication, aside from the unit type, uh, there is that uh, one optimization or one major optimization, I'd say, uh, that is also lacking in C and C++. And the reason for that is that uh, C and C++ are uh, very heavily relying on ABIs, meaning uh, it is important for C and C++ how exactly the bytes of some structure are lay, uh, laid in memory. While in Rust, uh, data structures are a little more abstract. So in this particular uh, method of uh, optimization, we move the fields around so that they occupy less space. So as you can see, uh, in C, it, the, the order of the fields in the memory layout is exactly the same as uh, as the one in the declaration, which you can uh, which you can check by your. Not use your rep C, then uh, you can see that uh, the that the Rust structures don't really care about the order you declare your fields. To, in. Uh, what is quite important though, it does not uh, work if you use nested structures. So if you use uh, anything like a tuple of a substructure, a structure as a field, then it's disabled. And the reason for that is pretty much the same as the reason for uh, lack of multiple optimization in C++ because of the language rules. So uh, if we want to take a reference to the set tuple, it needs to have the same memory layout like any other regular tuple in the memory. So it has to occupy the same bytes. And therefore, we can't just separate its fields. And because of that, uh, Rust can get uh, the same memory layout as C if using nested nested fields or nested structures. But uh, otherwise, uh, it will try to reorder the fields in the most uh, compressed way possible. And there is even a special fragma to ensure this. Uh, for co-products uh, or enums, we have uh, even more optimizations. The, I think, most uh, useful ones uh, on a daily basis is the optimization of uh, Boolean, non-null non, non pointers and non-zero numbers, uh, which is quite similar to how things are all pretty often handled in C. So if you have a pointer and you do know that it's not null, you pretty often will treat null as an invalid value uh, or uh, to signal the user or developer that this pointer hasn't been set at all. And uh, in Rust, of course, the analog of that is an option type. And just like uh, you would do in C, the non variant of the option is occupied by the null pointer because you, the null pointer isn't a valid value for, let's say, a box or a reference, which is not the case with just any usual pointer. Uh, and just like with pointers that do not have the null, null value, we do have uh, numbers like u size, for example that uh, treat zero as invalid value. 
which uh, makes it work pretty much like with pointers, considering that null is pretty much always non binary zero. Uh, with Boolean, the, it's a little bit different because uh, false and true usually map for zero and one, but because of that, uh, two or three are still uh, are still there to be used. So the non variant is uh, equal to binary two. But either way, it's uh, uh, the size is reduced uh, by the uh, by that optimization. Uh, you may uh, wonder what the dots here mean. The on this slide, the dots are there because in the C representation, each part of uh, of that layout takes uh, takes uh, uh, full thirty two bytes, I think, uh, thirty two bits, I think, yeah. And uh, in Rust, it's it's a little more, a bit more compressed. Uh, another optimi optimization which may prove useful to you in day-to-day -day life uh, is called product flat flattening, which means uh, if you have an option, then the memory layout is uh, pretty obvious because uh, if it's not a null pointer or a zero value of the non-zero type or a Boolean, but it's just, um, let's say, a byte value, then obviously uh, you do need to store the information on whenever the value is valid or not. So you do have uh, the part for the data and part for the so-called discriminator, which discriminates which variant of the enum you're at. Uh, and in theory, if you have uh, an enum of an enum, so for example, a result of an option or an option of an option, then you should get another discriminator for the outer layer. But in practice, for uh, for simple cases, Rust will flatten the discriminator. So, for instance, if you have an option of an option, then it will be flattened into a single discriminator that treats sum of sum and sum of none and none as free possible variants of the new enum, which saves quite a lot of space if you have multiple layers of that, and especially many layers if you have only, uh, if you consider how many enums of the kind of option and result of unit and async, etc you can stack together. But uh, as I mentioned, it's only for uh, for simple enums. And what I mean by simple is enums that have at most one field that, uh, that holds any information more than just what variant it is. So in practice, it means it looks like an option. So for example, it could be an, a result with the error type of unit or anything similar to that. So as you can see here, if the if we use a result with error type of, let's say a byte or an integer, then the optimization is disabled, sadly. Uh, well, it could be applied, but it wouldn't be so trivial and therefore uh, it, it should be dis discussed how it should be done. Uh, to show you why that optimization is a real deal, uh, a real feature and not just some minor stuff, I I want to show you some statistics that I gathered uh, by scanning code of some open source uh, repositories. So I took some. Uh, some standard Rust uh, repositories, so Rust C compiler, Serde, Tokyo, uh, Regex, uh, my own master thesis, Google, Google APIs, and Logger library, gathering 
more than 1,000 of unknown declarations. And here is what I found. Uh, most of anums are two, three, four, maybe five uh, variants they have. Uh, some of them have one or zero. And uh, no, there aren't that many of them that have more than five variants. It's pretty rare. Uh, and if they do, they mostly do not carry any data than, other than the information about which variant it is. And uh, it made me wonder, OK, so I have two, three, four uh, variants, but uh, it doesn't mean that I only have one field on them or zero fields on them. So what I checked is, uh, the maximal number of fields in variants. And uh, that result was even even more interesting for me because over 40% of them had zero fields at all. So they were enums in the classical C sense. And uh, about one in one third of them had at most one field. So a variant that is basically a wrapper for another type, which makes sense if you think about it. And then it's less than 15% of anoms that have two fields or more in any variant. So uh, that, uh, that alone show, uh, shows that that optimization may Maybe nice, considering that it works for it works for uh, anums that have zero or one fields at most, and if they have one field, then only in one variant. So I checked. Okay, but if the maximal number of fields is one, then what is the minimal number of fields? Or what is the number of fields that are non-zero? And uh, it turned out that in most cases, if you if we have an anum with one field at most, then in most cases both variants do carry a value, so that optimization optimization doesn't apply. But it's over fifteen percent when it does. So, uh, as I said, the uh, numbers that look like an option are pretty widespread, actually, because one in a in six anum declarations uh, are of that kind, and they can flatten. So, uh, if you ever saw uh, an anum that uh, has multiple layers uh, of other anums inside of it. Uh, in in its monomorphization, it there is a pretty pretty big change. It will be flattened, and therefore you will save both memory and performance. Uh, and uh, the third thing that that I wanted to show you that is also um, let's say um, it's also connected to algebraic structures are uh, futures and you know it's it's not that uh, that that obvious to see because uh, anums and structures are the dictionary definitions of product and coproduct from type algebra while futures are that uh, abstract thing that is defined by what it does it's uh, a trait, right? But uh, considering how it's implemented in Rust, both uh, futures and iterators are actually implemented as anums. So um, if, uh, if you ever implemented a future on your own, then you probably do know it. So if you take some imperative code that uses the new async await syntax, 
it uh, actually gets compiled to something that I wouldn't call an algebraic structure per se. That's why in the title of my presentation, I called it uh, similar to algebraic structure. And here is why. Uh, while I can show you the end of representation of what it uh, what the above code compiles to, uh, which is the block future here, it's not entirely true what I show you here, because uh, you see if you take uh, just any normal enum, then if I go from the enter stage which is uh, when I enter the future and go to the signal next stage when I await for the next signals to arrive, then I should uh, move the signals from, from the block future and then create a new block future of another variant and move the signals back there. And here is the problem. It's uh, it's a nonsense because you move the memory around for nothing because uh, we statically know that it will be moved back or at least it can be moved back. And in this case, uh, it's especially silly considering that the from here, from the awaiting to the, for the next signal, we go to sending the data of that signal to some target and then we go to the signals again so we would move the memory around for no reason inside of a loop which is even worse uh, and because it's so much against the rust zero cost motto it's not actually implemented that way what could be done is of course implementing the block structure as a structure in instead of an enum. And uh, in this particular case, it would be a good idea probably because we use signals all the time and the only things that would reuse the memory are the ID and data and error and error is probably not that big. Huh? But in other cases, well, it bloats up to potentially enormous uh, sizes. So the problem here is it's not really obvious what is optimization because optimization should have a criterion. And on one hand, we have a structure representation which bloats the size but boosts the speed. And on another, we have enum representation, which puts the speed, which puts the size, but blows the speed. So the solution here is to use something that is similar to both in a way. So we check which fields are available at which stage of the future execution make it a table or any graphic representation you want and check which fields uh, are used at the same time. And if they are not never used at the same time, then they can reoccupy the same space. Just like here in, in uh, this example, if we have uh, some bounds or indexes in a vector, and an iterator based on them, and the iterator isn't available on the same stage of the future execution as the indexes, probably. So it can reoccupy the space. And conveniently, because uh, the iterator over a vector is just twice the size of an index, then it reoccupies the space perfectly. So now we have the size of the future uh, cut by one third, which is uh, quite nice, but it doesn't really show 
the true power of this optimization, considering that many futures used to be kilobytes in size before turning on this optimization. And uh, as you can see, this optimization of futures, uh, which I called coproducts on steroids, is uh, somewhat a combination of the field reordering, because we are definitely reordering the fields here, and the coproduct optimization, because we do a similar trick to what we did with not null pointers. Any questions or remarks for that part of the presentation? I sh as as I, I as I said, uh, the rest is pretty unique in uh, in the low level optimization topic because uh, because the optimization are enabled by the language, just like they are prevented by languages like C and C plus plus, and not really needed in languages like Haskell. And it's uh, the best example of that that I know is optimization of futures that I showed you. Okay, so uh, let's see your questions. Uh, Lucas Prokop from YouTube asks, does flattening of the discrimination of result result occur as well? Uh, thank you for your question, Lucas. Uh, yes, uh, it does happen uh, as long as one of the variants of the result is a unit type or a never type. Well, if it's a never time that it's not an optimization actually, of course, uh, if it's a unit type, then the result is practically working like an option. So it works for any enums that uh, that look like an option, you could say. So they have uh, at most uh, two variants, and at most one of them carries some information. Uh, well, there, I, I heard that there are plans to enable more than two variants, uh, but then you would need to have uh, more fields that have uh, that particular, uh, that this particular um, characteristics. Like if you have a single variant of two pointers, then of course you could, uh, you could encode other variants by null on either of these pointers, but then um, the problem with that is that you would need to do multiple checks, which isn't really good for per performance. So that's why it's tricky and uh, not really that trivial. Yaimokond uh, on Twitch asks, where are the usage statistics from? I missed the early piece of the talk, so apologies if that was covered already. Uh, yes, it's my, my original research. Uh, I just scanned them uh, with, uh, with a Rust tool for parsing the code. So I parsed the code and I just uh, used uh, kind of a grep-like thing, you could say. Jam one gainer from YouTube asks, I always heard the internal representation of futures being represented as a state machine. Uh, yes, the enum is an implementation of a state machine. Uh, as you could see on the slide of mine with that uh, enum representation, I, uh, I showed you 
the state changes or the possible state changes by arrows. It's a little more explicit in the next slide when you have a, a, a table with availability of the fields. So uh, the state machine is the abstract concept and you are right, it is a state machine and anons and structures are the implementations of the state machine. Dot Chris, please, from Twitch asks, so option of non-zero non U8 can be optimized into single byte by reusing the zero bit pattern. Yes, exactly. How close are we to generalizing that the other bit patterns, for example, if I have an U8 like type that's never, oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, there have been discussions about uh, this particular um, example that you used, the uh, the FF pattern. Uh, well, there are two reasons why it's zero. First is that uh, comparing to zero is the fastest of the comparisons between uh, between variables and literals, just because of how it looks in the machine code. Uh, but in fact, the, uh, there is no reason to not to generalize it. The main problem is that this optimization is built in the language. So it wouldn't be obvious if the, uh, if the change is optimal in the performance sense. It would be in the memory layout sense, of course. Uh, in fact, uh, if it's uh, if it's FF uh, case or minus one is also a popular idea, then nothing stops us from that. I I think, and I've actually seen some implementations of that, and I've done an implementation implementation of that myself. Uh, as for as for checking if something is uh, less than something or greater than something, not so in, easy on the language level. So the problem here isn't the uh, technical aspect, but it's the safety aspect in this case. Uh, the safety aspect and uh, and uh, uh, proof that it's indeed more performant. So. Um, you could say that it's uh, it's zero because we don't want to wonder if it's the best choice, both performance-wise and size-wise. Scrabsha from Twitch asks, would that be possible to create an option of option of option of option of unit two hundred? 56 repetitions and have it flattened so that handling it would be as simple as handling a U8. Uh, well, it depends on what you mean by handling because uh, from the code perspective, it's still just an option of option of option, etc. of unit. But yes, it will compile down to a single byte so yes it is possible it's just uh, a corner case that i wouldn't expect to see in a while but yes it it is possible and it is possible uh, just uh, in the current rust versions or so i think at least maybe 255 repetitions uh unless it would crack the compiler considering the level of nesting but that's another thing really uh, sub cyber trader from twitch asks are phantom ties strictly necessary or could everything also represent it with uh unit variants uh well phantom types are 
are also an interesting topic. It's uh, li it's indeed a little bit uh, connected to what I've told you about. Uh, as far as I know, um, the language uh, rules for pointers. So, so what kind of pointer is a subtype of another pointer? Uh, do permit using uh, pointers to unit or unit variants uh, as a sort of phantom type. And I did see that in the wild, actually. But uh, you know, uh, I always considered phantom type to be uh, more of an abstract convention. But yes, of course, if, if he, what you mean is that uh, it could be used like that, yes, I think it could be used like that. And uh, I've actually did use uh, unit type in very, I'd say, weird ways. So for instance, you could use the unit type to just create some fields that are available or not depending on what kind of uh, generic arguments you have the spec the type instantiated with. So for example, you have some field X, but only if the type is instantiated with uh, integer or something like that. And uh, it can actually be quite useful if you make a library for uh, for uh, multi-dimensional computations. Uh, it's not an easy task to choose the best answer, the best question, sorry. Uh, I personally like dot Chris please question for option of non-zero U8, considering that uh, that's exactly the the way I thought while uh, reading about this topic. So, congrat congratulations dot Chris, the the book is yours. <laughs> 